I'd like to introduce Jan Beckers from um, the, the founder of the Hitfox Group. The Hitfox Group is a really interesting uh, company that has actually spawned a number of innovative new companies sort of as satellites. I think I heard, I heard Hitfox Group described as an incubator, but it's not quite that. Um, but I'm going to let Jan talk a little bit more about what it is and what they're doing and how they're impacting the future of mobile and online game marketing. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Jan. It's nice to have Perfect. you here again, Jan. I'm glad to be here again in San Francisco. So I will be talking about uh, today about the future of mobile and online game marketing. Before I go into the future, I go a bit into the past and into the status quo. And I'm starting with a short personal introduction. So basically, um, I'm 30 years old. I started six companies, two of them relevant for the session. It's a sponsor pay. And then uh, most importantly for me now, it's the Hitfox group. So basically, Hitfox, as said, is an incubator. But we are only focused on starting companies that all are synergetic in acquiring users for mobile game publishers and online publishers, and in working with game publishers alongside the value chain. So we have right now 110 employees in four cities, including San Francisco. We work for 180 game publishers and have 1,000 plus media partners generating us for the biggest publishers about 1 million gamers per month on an ongoing basis. So talking now about the past of what I saw in terms of mobile and online game marketing. So mobile and online games were basically booming for several years. So everybody who had a solid game out in 2005, a solid online game, and could do marketing on an OK level, he could already see a very big success during that time just because the market was doing so well. Same for the very early times of social games, and then later also for the very early times of mobile games. It was a very attractive market. One of the reasons for that was that there were a lot of uneducated players that have never been playing online or mobile before. So it was rather easy to satisfy them, and not only with lower qualities of games, but also with lower qualities of advertisements. So it was just clicky, and since it was free, in the end, uh, in the early game marketing times, untargeted banners, if you only bought your traffic cheap enough, worked rather well. That was in the very early times. That's gone, of course. So looking to today, so the good news is the market is still growing very fast, or still growing very attractive, and it will continue to grow based on mostly the emerging markets kicking in, but then also on more players in the end turning into players. So that's the good side and the attractive side of the market. But then the problem today for everybody, and that's probably why this uh, session is, uh, is also a bit crowded, the platforms are get getting really crowded. So basically, why the market is still growing, it's just so many developers out there right now competing for the same users. So user acquisition became a bottleneck for everybody within the last years, and everybody of you being a game publisher knows that this is really a pain point. And while it is a bottleneck, also the advertising landscape became extremely complex and uh, extremely rich also of hundreds and thousands of companies there, fulfilling different functions within the value chain. It just became a very complex situation. And it's clear it will stay dynamic. There are many advertising models that will not stay there in the long term because they are not de basically not delivering value to the ecosystem. So basically, in the end, uh, uh, there is more change to come, but not only on the advertising side, also affected from that on the game publisher side. So basically, game publishers will see more and more consolidation with those being good in terms of developing the best products, 
but also with those being good in getting the products out to the users with the smartest forms of advertising. They will stay doing the positioning of market consolidation and we can already see that a lot of companies in a consolidating market now do very well based on some certain marketing best practices. And I'm going to talk now about some key marketing trends that game publishers should really follow to stay on top in their business. So the first thing is looking at cross promotion, which probably everybody who has several titles out from a more strategic point of view. So basically everybody is trying to push players from one side of his game to the others. But to make it really well, in the end, publishers should think about their whole business model. For the last years, whenever there was a new platform coming up, a new platform such as social or mobile, it was rational to be a platform-focused player. That means, basically, a publisher considered himself to be a mobile games publisher, a publisher considered himself to be a Facebook game publisher, or a publisher considered to himself to be a browser games publisher. And while the platforms were all new, that made a lot of sense because the most critical knowledge to gain and the most critical focus was getting the distribution right on that platform and the actual gameplay then was second because the users were uneducated. But now where web as a platform, then social gaming and mobile gaming is all becoming all are becoming mature platform. Now in the future, the critical knowledge is more about really knowing your audience, really knowing the category of games you're developing. So only being focused on a specific category of games, such as a king.com is successfully developing only for casual players or only for a certain type. And then with titles that actually have similar graphics that use similar wording in the, uh, in the brand names they pick, such as the Zaga, which has a heavy impact on then the recognition of players, even if they only see out the, the, the banners. So to do cross-promotion strategically well, and cross-promotion will be one of the channels that will continue to gain influence, you must focus on a specific audience or genre in the future, and not so much on a specific platform. So every publisher in the future will be a cross-platform publisher. I assume that this is the case in two, three years. And then it is about getting those players from one game to the other across the platforms. And for doing so, I would go into focusing on one audience or one specific genre, but doing that product really well. One of the reasons why that's advantages is because if you're focused only on one target group, you can leverage the data you're generating much better because obviously the interpretation of data from a casual game to another casual game is much simpler than if you would do it from a high-end high MMO game uh, with a complex uh, target group of players that stay for years rather than for months and then adjust or adapt that knowledge to a casual game that really doesn't work so well. And big data will be a wholly new grail in game advertising. So the sophisticated advertisers are really tracking nearly everything. And then they retarget only towards profitable group of users. So for example, retarget to those group of users where within your game analytics you found these are the profitable ones or these are in the end, the traffic sources that have been working well, or doing any kind of, of combinations of data you can do. That will have a big impact also because it's moving towards not only CPI, but towards the ROI optimized CPI. So basically, um, we're coming from a situation where in the early marketing times almost all inventory was sold on CPM and then it moved a lot towards CPC. It's still sometimes there, but many other companies like, for example, our companies AppLift or uh, Etu Games work now on CPI based. And then with sophisticated advertisers, 
we are very happy to also work on our eye optimized campaign, basically on campaigns where developers will pay out for those users that complete uh, a certain level to, uh, or a certain tutorial, pay higher for those users. Or in the end, uh, it will all move towards spendings that go in the direction of, of basically the ROI. So pay more for quality traffic to get payers instead of getting only the players. Then looking at uh, other formats of advertisement that don't have the traditional or that don't have the weaknesses of banners with ever increasing or with ever decreasing click rates of advertising, it's basically smart content integration. That's something also steadily on the rise within the last years. So basically avoiding that your banners look like banners, but you provide actual value by integrating them smart in lists. So by doing so, you can reach out to actual both the classic media, but also then the new gaming media. This could be new blogs emerging, writing about games. And by giving them a smart incentive to integrate your games into their blog, into their portals, in a way where in the end they get paid only when they, get, when they deliver user to you. You do two times. So basically, first, they make sure you get distributed there. The distribution is increasing. On the other side, it also oftentimes has a nice side effect that your game evaluations, when they write and review about games, are also improving. So uh, that's one of the advantages of smart content integration, which is on the rise. And a further advantage is that those players who really looked on the gaming review sites are actually very much willing to explore your game. And since they had the option to choose out of maybe 100 games and they decided for your games, that's already a good pre-selection in terms of will they be likely to become payers in the, in the end. And finally, I think, uh, and that's probably a very good news for any game developer here, it's basically uh, what we think that in the long run, marketing is helpful, will help you, and must be done right. But in the very long run, it's about the product, the product, and the product. So with the users becoming more educated, and with users that actually played 10 different types of casual games, and then know what is a good game, what is a bad game, then basically the product will more and more do the job of the marketing. It's a situation where you could, you could compare an uninformed market with a restaurant that you want to choose in a tourist de destination that you have never seen before. In that case, you're very likely to, in the end, follow the restaurant which did the marketing right. That's an early uninformed market, such as the gaming market was some years before, and maybe in certain parts still continues to be. But that's going to change. And then consider the same situation where you choose for a restaurant in your hometown. So you will not go to the restaurant with the best marketing, but it's very likely that you actually go to the restaurant with the best product. And I think that's also what's going to happen in the future of online games marketing. So I think in the end, as a takeaway, it's for sure every game publisher has to get his marketing right. And this means being data focused, using the right channels, looking beyond the classic banner spending, looking into content integration. But then it's also about those real game publisher core competences. In the end, in the very long run, the more and more educated the users are, the more and more educated the whole ecosystem becomes with media reviewing, with more and more game uh, selections being dependent on virality, on recommendations. It's in the end very much about developing the best products again in the future. And for doing so, I would recommend following the good examples of publishers that became cross-platform publishers over all platforms, but then stick to one very precise target group. And that could be even much smaller 
than casual games as a big field. It could be somehow a niche, but if you do the best product within the niche, then that's likely to go to pay out. And I think it's something the ecosystem also in general will benefit because it's making sure that the gamers get great games. And uh, while I'm running an advertising company or a company that is in the end very much involved with advertising, in the end we are all here uh, based on the purpose of serving, of bridging the best games in the end to the gamer. And uh, that's uh, the message I want to stay here in the room. And I'm very grateful for your attention on that and also very happy to take any questions. Thanks. So my first question is that I was promised that you were going to do this in the fox suit. I <laughs> want to know where the fox suit went. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, what we're going to do on the after party. So gotcha. the fox will be there. <laughs> and the fox will have its drinks. Questions for Jan? Nothing. I guess you covered everything perfectly, as <laughs> usual. Thanks. Thank you very much for your time and your presentation. Always a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So give me a few minutes to get Jan unmiked, and we'll get the next speaker up on stage. <laughs>